Hey guys, what's up? It's Steve. So with Thanksgiving just a week away, I know there's a bunch of turkey videos out there. Uh, obviously a lot of different ways to cook a turkey. Uh, what I wanted to show you in this video is how to uh, cook a turkey on the pit barrel cooker using their new turkey hanger. Uh, we're also going to take a look at some of the other new accessories that pit barrel has uh, that just recently came out. We're going to be brining this turkey uh, using the Mad Hunky uh, poultry brine. Uh, this is going to be awesome. Let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so here is my 13 pound turkey that I've got here. And as I mentioned, we're gonna be doing a uh, wet, uh, wet brine solution on this. So there is a ton of debate on whether you should or should not brine turkeys. And if you are brining, whether or not you should do a wet brine or a dry brine. Um, some guys uh, just scratch the brining all together and uh, just put some rub or some sort of seasoning on the outside and just throw it on the smoker uh, or whatever roaster they're using. Uh, some people like to inject turkeys. Um, what I would say to all that is just try out different methods, just see what works out for you. I think that uh, wet brining definitely adds moisture and flavor uh, and it, it's a fairly simple process. And so the whole reason why I wanted to kind of show you this process um, of how I, I like to do turkeys is just how simple it is. And so <clears throat> I'm going to be using the uh, Mad Hunky Meats Poultry Brine. I've been a big uh, fan of uh, Rich over at Mad Hunky Meats for a long time. If you guys have been following me, you know that. He's a great guy. His products are super fresh, um, high quality. This is one pound. I'm probably going to use about half of this. And essentially all we're going to have to do is just, um, I've got a cooler here and we're just going to get the bird and the cooler mixed up with this brine uh, solution and let it sit overnight. Okay, so I, I'm starting off with a half a gallon of water here. If, if I want to, I'll add a little bit more once I've got the bird and the, and the cooler. But um, again, Mad, uh, Mad Honky Poultry Brine. This has, I'll read some of the ingredients here. It's got salt, sodium phosphate, dry honey, uh, spices, onion powder, and dehydrated celery. So lots of good stuff. Amazing uh, flavor coming off of that when you take a little smell there. And again, I'm just gonna use about half of this, just like that. That looks good. And we're just gonna get the lid on this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and shake this up. All right, so I've got my 45 quart Pelican cooler here, which um, holds ice for days. So this is ideal for a, a brine bath like this overnight. I already have a little bit of ice in the bottom. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our brine solution. Dump that in there. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start adding some more water. All right, so there we go. So I added a little bit more water, about another gallon, added the rest of my bag of ice so the bird is completely covered. Um, we're gonna let this sit for definitely overnight. Uh, you're kind of looking for anywhere between like 12 and 15 hours. Um, again, this, this Pelican cooler or a Yeti, you know, some of those higher end coolers with a bag of ice, you can shut this lid and you do not have to worry about this ice melting. Uh, if you have a less insulated cooler, then um, you may want to check on it, you know, at least once during the night to make sure it's nice and ice cold. You don't want this to, you don't want this ice to start melting and stuff like that. So, um, so this thing is all set super easy. That took all just a couple minutes and it's going to add a lot of moisture and flavor to this bird. So we're going to go ahead and shut the lid and we'll pick back up tomorrow. All right. So here we are. I let this bird brine for 15 hours. Uh, I did not rinse it off. We want to leave all that uh, brining mixture on the, the outside of the bird because that's going to act as the binder for our rub. So as I mentioned earlier, whole point of uh, this approach in this video, cooking this bird is just, uh, just short and simple. Just, you know, other than the brining process, um, we're not going to inject, we're not going to pull the skin up and, you know, stuff butter or other mixtures like that up underneath. Uh, you're just going to take whatever favorite rub you want to use. Uh, I'm going to be using the uh, Meat Church D's Nuts Pecan Rub. 
Um, this is an amazing, uh, not only is the name amazing, you gotta laugh every time you, you see this, but um, uh, it's amazing on poultry. It goes really well with pork too, but um, I'm a big fan of, uh, and so is my family, of using pecan-based rubs on poultry. So uh, definitely go check these guys out. They have a ton of amazing rubs. I'll have a link in the description. So all we're gonna do is just go ahead and start getting this bird nice and dusted up. All right, so let me go ahead and show you the turkey hanger. So it comes in these two pieces right here. Uh, this first piece has the little uh, circular uh, metal ring on the end. And then we have this piece right here. So the first piece just goes through the um, hole um, by the neck and it's just gonna go all the way through the, through the bird. And then we take this piece and slide it through the ring. This is what's gonna be hanging on the rebar and you just pick it up and there you go, that's all you gotta do. All right guys, before we get uh, our pit barrel here cranked up for our turkey, uh, for you pit barrel owners out there, uh, pit barrel has recently released some uh, epic new uh, accessories that I just wanted to quickly walk you through in case you're interested. First thing are their new, um, these are called the uh, pit grips. So these are some uh, uh, heat resistant uh, grilling mitts here. They're resistant up to 350 degrees Celsius or uh, 662 degrees Fahrenheit. So you've got some nice little uh, grip texture here on the back and they're incredibly comfortable. Okay, so the next thing we have here that people are really amped up about is the new uh, ash pan here. So one of the previous kind of complaints from pit barrel owners was cleaning the ash out of the PBC and say so you'd either have to just pick the whole thing up and dump it out or use a shop back or something like that. So on the bottom of the charcoal basket, you have these little, uh, like, uh, little hooks right here. And so all you do now is you just slide these up underneath it just like this. And then you're gonna be able to just pick up uh, this entire thing out of your pit barrel and all your ashes are gonna be on the bottom of your ash pan, just like that. Okay, so lastly, this is hands down my favorite new accessory that uh, the pit barrel folks are offering. It's a new um, grilling grate with this little uh, swing section over here that opens up, a little swivel section, and so, um, Probably the most common complaint that, that I've heard is, you know, when you've got meat hanging on the rebar, then it's, you know, with the grate that comes with it, obviously you're not gonna be able to use the grate as well. And so in this setup now, we can have some meat that's still hanging down on this side, but have our grate in and have some things uh, cooking on our grate over here. So excellent new option uh, if that's something that appeals to you. I know I'm gonna be using that a lot. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our bird on our PBC here. I'm gonna slide this other uh, rebar underneath here just like that. And it's just gonna sit right there perfectly in the middle how just flawlessly that hangs right there. So I've got, um, for this cook, I've got one chunk of pear, one chunk of pecan, and one chunk, uh, chunk of peach wood. So you're gonna have some really great smoke uh, flavor profile on this bird. And then I've got uh, one uh, probe right there in the thickest part of the, of the breast, so I'll be monitoring this. So I'm thinking maybe about uh, three hours, but uh, Obviously, I'll be checking it close. We'll pick back up in just a little bit. All right, guys, we are at the three and a half hour mark. Our turkey uh, is at 152 degrees on the internal temp. It's my readout uh, from my eye grill too right now. Um, so I'm thinking I probably have about another 30, possibly 45 more minutes. Uh, it's been raining pretty hard here all afternoon on and off and it's starting to get dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just uh, let, let this bird get up to about 160, 165. Let it rest for a while and then we'll uh, pick back up in the kitchen uh, and slice into the sky and take a look. All right guys, so our bird ended up going about four hours on the pit barrel. I'll let it rest for about 30 minutes. Just wanted to give you a nice little kind of zoomed out shot of the whole bird here. Just looks absolutely gorgeous. This thing was um, just pouring out juices as it uh, sat in the pan resting for 30 minutes. So 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and carve into it now. All right. Now I know that, you know there are more professional ways to carve a turkey, but I'm just doing this for presentation purposes. Oh my gosh, this looks absolutely amazing. This thing is just pouring out juice. Look at this right here. Cut that off. You can just see how amazingly tender and juicy that is. Oh my gosh, so much flavor coming off of this. I have some uh, extra special taste testers that are gonna give this a try tonight. All right, girls, it's time to check this out. Let me know what you think. This is amazing. It tastes really good. Yeah, I really like um, like this sauce and stuff. Is it juicy? All that juice on the board came straight out of that turkey. It's so good. I wish I could too. You like it? I really like it. All right, tell everybody happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Come back next time on this YouTube. Oh, and by the way, I'm totally eating that loaf for dinner. All right, all right, say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>